This is a 2013 Infiniti JX35, a family SUV loaded with so many advanced features for the time period that it makes you wonder, who were they targeting? Were they targeting the Jetsons family with this thing? Today I borrowed this car here in Allentown, Pennsylvania to show you why this is a compelling contender in this segment. After that, I'll show you some of my favorite features, take it for a drive, and then at the very end, I will point out some of the things that you should look for if you're planning on buying one. The 2013-2020 Infiniti JX35 and QX60 is a seven-passenger luxury crossover SUV that was offered by Infiniti, the luxury division of Nissan. The JX35 was first introduced in 2012 as a 2013 model, and then it was sold in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. By the following year, though, it changed its name to the QX60 in order to align the vehicle with Infiniti's new naming strategy, which is basically to make it easier for consumers to understand the brand's lineup. And that strategy involved using the letter Q for all the brand's cars and SUVs. So the letter QX for its SUVs and Q just for the uh, normal cars. But don't worry, they're still the same car. One of the standout features of the JX35 is its spacious and comfortable interior. There's three rows of seats to provide ample room for passengers and the materials used in the interior are of high quality. The JX35 also comes uh, standard with a wide range of features including a rear view camera and navigation system and a Bose audio system. The JX35, just like the QX60, is powered by a 3.5 liter V6 engine that produces 265 horsepower and 248 foot-pounds of torque. And the engine is paired with a continuously variable transmission that sends the power to the front wheels unless you opted for the available all-wheel drive system. The powertrain provides a very smooth and quiet ride and the JX35 may not be as sporty as some other luxurious SUVs. The JX35 and QX60 also offer a good fuel economy for its class. The front wheel drive version gets an APA estimated 18 miles to the gallon in the city and 23 on the highway, while the all wheel drive system gets 17 and 23 respectively. Now, let's take a look around and go into the interior where I'll show you some of my favorite features. Then we'll take it for a spin and I'm just gonna show you uh, at the very end the things that you should look for when you're buying one. All right, now let's talk about my favorite features and let's kick it off with the adaptive cruise control on this car. Now keep in mind this is a 2013, so back in time uh, where this kind of technology was just really taking off. And this one uh, works quite well. Uh, just recently, I, I, I was testing it out and I was quite impressed uh, with, with how the system worked. So once you set your uh, uh, cruising speed, uh, it would allow you to have a, a preset distance for this vehicle and the computer to follow the vehicle in front of it. And you can adjust that about two or three different uh, distances. And then also what happens is uh, it'll, it'll adjust all the way down to a complete stop. Uh, and then you can re-engage and, and start going from there on. It works really well, applies the brakes and everything. Um, it's, it's, I mean, obviously nowadays a lot more cars have this feature, but for a 2013, I thought that was pretty impressive and really, really, really like it. The next feature I wanna to talk to you about is down here, and it has to do with the headlights. This car has a pretty interesting feature, which uh, I, I don't know that I've seen it in, in any other car. Um, yeah, I don't think so, but you let me know. If you've seen this in another car, I'll be curious to know. But it has adjustable height headlights that you can control with a button here. It allows you to bring the headlights down or up so you can face it 
uh, and, and have the uh, headlight reach further down the road or closer down. You can see right here, there's a little button with three different settings that you can adjust. And I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. And while we're here, another feature that I like uh, and, and as you can see, I like features that have to do with driver engagements. So a lot of the things are right here where the driver sits. But this one, it's pretty cool because it gives you a little bit of space when you're coming in or stepping out of the car. And it's the driver position assist or whatever Infinity calls it. But when you turn the car off, it pulls the steering wheel away from you and pushes the, the seats back. Uh, a lot of other cars do that as well, but I think it's pretty neat. Check it out. And then as I step back in and start the car again, for some reason it didn't do the steering wheel this time, but it usually does it. Maybe it broke. All right. The other feature that I really like is uh, here in the uh, infotainment system. And it has to do with the 360 degree backup camera system. And as you can see, I'm gonna put it in reverse right now and you can see how the system engages. Now this has cameras all around the car giving you a, a panoramic view, a 360 view uh, uh, for all of your surroundings. And, and then there's software that stitches the different cameras together here, kind of giving you a complete look all around the car. And this vehicle also has the integrated MOD, which uh, stands for Mobile Object Detection, I believe, uh, which it, it will detect vehicles moving around the car and beep if uh, one uh, starts to approach approach or get too close to you or you too close to it and uh, what's interesting is if if uh, you know there's something that the the computer thinks that you're gonna hit it actually applies the brakes and stops the car and just to wrap it up on the interior features you know it's a very nice laid out uh, interior and if you're the kind of person that likes a lot of buttons this is actually you know very nice looking now i do get confused uh all the time literally all the time with these two systems it, it appears that your climate control is up here but there's some climate control features down here you can adjust your temperature or where the air is coming from if you want dual or single settings uh, and so I think that this throws me off because then it makes me believe that this infotainment control system here has to do with climate, which it does not. This is your climate up here. I wish they would have put that up there and that down here just to make it more cohesive. The uh, infotainment system continues here. You have your shifter indicator here and then your selection for snow, eco, normal or sport and seat warmers here, no seat coolers on this car. Then on the other side of the driver here, you have multiple controls for your tailgate, your steering wheel, uh, warmers. Uh, you have your power lift gate. You can turn it. You can turn that feature on and off. Traction control, and then there's also a power outlet in the back that you can use, and that uh, uh, that button to turn it on and off is also down here. Lots of buttons to push. Lots of buttons. All right, driving the Infinity JX35 and QX60 combo. Again, same SUV, different name. And I've been driving this one for quite a while, so I'm very familiar uh, with their driving dynamics. Now, key takeaway for this vehicle is that it was a complete departure from Infinity's traditional sporty driving experience. This vehicle is very comfortable very uh, plush uh, it, it, you you're not going to have a for instance a BMW type driving experience here as soon as you get into this vehicle it is plush it is comfortable it is spacious as I mentioned uh, at the beginning and so if those things sound interesting to you then this vehicle may be for you uh, again think up think about what the the uh, customer base uh, was for infinity when designing this vehicle family seven passenger luxury right so lots of comfort lots of space and lots of utility and that's what you find here all the controls are re easy to reach um, driving position is comfortable for long trips and the seats are also very comfortable the 
the CVT transmission, uh, as I mentioned, not just as a whole being a horrible transmission, uh, but this one specifically is also just takes it to another level. The shifting points are not very accurate. Uh, it, the way that it engages when you start going, it's just, it, it is not a good driving experience uh, for anybody, I would think. Braking is good, engine torque, as I mentioned, uh, 248 foot pounds, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, these uh, engines are notorious for being very responsive, so you don't really feel like you're lacking too much power in this. I think it has plenty of power for what it is and visibility is also quite good I, I can see every angle of this car and it also helps to have that uh, uh, blind spot monitoring and the mirrors to help you look around I do have a pet peeve with the uh, steering wheel heater for this car the button is actually all the way down here hidden why couldn't they just put it on the steering wheel to make it easy to turn on and off beats me but that's where it is so overall, very uh, nice, reliable, you know, comfortable vehicle uh, for you to get. Uh, you do get good bang for your buck. Uh, you know, luxury, spacious vehicle. Uh, the CVT transmission, it, it's a compromise. Uh, you have to understand that uh, there's a lot of recorded issues uh, with these transmissions. So if that's a concern for you, just make sure that you have the vehicle uh, well uh, checked out and that you're okay with the driving dynamics. Go out, take it for a spin, make sure that you like the way that the vehicle drives because you will be doing all the driving yourself, right? If you've driven a minivan, I think that you will find this to be very familiar. Um, I think it's a great option for people that don't want to be seen around in a minivan but need the space Perhaps you want to get one of these. And now, let's take a look at some of the things that you should look for when you're planning on buying one. So guys, before we begin, let me just say that when you go buy a house, you get yourself a realtor, don't you? If you're gonna buy a car, which is most likely the second biggest expense that you are going to have in your lifetime, why do you do it alone? You need help. Car dealerships have salespeople that are there selling cars every single day. They have a lot more experience than you do. Don't go about it by yourself. I got people reaching out to me all the time after the fact. So please, if you need my help, contact me beforehand I will put you in contact with somebody locally that can help you I'll help you myself right here on the YouTube ch uh, channel comments below email me it doesn't really matter I'll help you for free now I made a video to show you general things to look for when buying any car like body shape signs of wear leaks etc I've also created a checklist uh, it's, got, it's probably the most comprehensive list on the internet. Use that as your basis to check everything. But now let me highlight some of the things that I think can be very costly for this car uh, specifically. Keep in mind that it's always a good idea to bring along a car savvy friend with you to help you look for things. If you find yourself a car that you have your heart set on, I also recommend that you get yourself a PPI, a pre-purchase inspection, done by an experienced shop or the dealership. It will be the best $150 that you spend on the car. Right, so now let's jump right into it. First thing we've got to talk about is the timing chain rattle. This is one of the issues that should not be ignored as it can become very costly. Rattling or tapping noises coming from the front of the engine could be due to worn out timing chain components. The chain guides, rails, and tensioners wear out giving the chain some slack and eventually uh, some of these parts can fall into the engine uh, itself and, and, and make their way to the oil pan and that will cause catastrophic failure. The average cost to replace your timing chain as the filming of this video is $2,000 to $2,500 depending where you take it. You may also find yourself uh, a better deal from local shops, but regardless where you go, if you detect the problem, have the vehicle checked thoroughly, and if you still want it, then just make sure you take it off the price. Now the other thing is on the other side of the engine bay. So I'm on this side just to make sure it makes sense to you. But it's the CVT transmission. These vehicles are equipped 
with a continu continuously variable uh, transmission. For Nissan Infiniti vehicles, in particular, they are made uh, by a company called JATCO, which is, uh, it stands for Japan Automatic Transmission Company. And JATCO is mostly owned by Nissan, and I'm sorry to say, their CVT transmissions suck. There's tons of documented problems in a wide range of vehicles using their CVT transmissions, such as the Sentra, Murano, Q50, QX60, etc. Uh, as well as many other vehicles from other brands. Most common issues are shifting, hesitation, and just simply dying. Replacing this transmission can run you from six to seven thousand dollars. Ouch! The next potentially costly item is also in this area. You see the pattern? It's the catalytic converters. As these cars age, the cats will begin to degrade, requiring replacement. And this can cost anywhere from three to $4,000, depending where you go. You may opt for aftermarket replacement cats, which could save you hundreds, if not thousands. However, keep in mind that you get what you pay for. Also, be sure to check for any stored codes in the car's diagnostics computer to ensure that you're not buying a car with damaged catalytic converters. Also, ask the owner for previous history of any work uh, done on the vehicle. Next, I'm going to talk to you about some recalls. So let's, let's, let's talk about that. Ha 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 ha! All right, recalls are very important. With any vehicle that you're gonna go purchase, just make sure that you check on the recalls. If there's any outstanding recalls for the car, the best option to find out recall information is to go to your manufacturer's website. I've included the link below. In the US, you can also visit the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration website. The link is also included below. For either option, you will, you're going to need this, uh, a vehicle 17 character VIN and this will provide you the list of recalls for the vehicle you're looking into. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you find this video informative and helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, put them below. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video and got some, some uh, value out of it, give me a like, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.